Uh, Lincoln Riley has hired a guy by the name of Cliff Kingsbury, who we all know, and he is an analyst. And I posted it and tagged a few D1 coaches on it on Twitter last week when Cliff Kingsbury was not only in the huddle during a play during the game, he was actually talking to Caleb Williams and designing what looked like a play. So I, not most, most naysayers and common folk out here don't realize the severity of what was going on. So I posted it because I don't like either coach and we don't get along and they hate me. So I'm, I love to post this one. So I posted it and I said, hey, Zach Smith. Uh, and uh, a few other guys I tagged. Is this uh is is Cliff a tenth coach? Because the NCAA added ten coaches now from nine to ten, which mean can be on the field, can actively go recruit, can hit the road, can talk to co- players, can coach on the field. Analysts cannot, Michelle, as you know. Yep. Cliff is in the huddle during the game. That is a clear violation, an NCAA violation, and I haven't heard anyone talk about it. I haven't heard SC taking any backlash. Lincoln Riley has not been brought up. There's no allegations. There's no accusations. There's no talk of bowl banning. There's no talk of anything. But as soon as Harbaugh farts in the wind and we smell it, bam, you got another incident. So why are the NCAA allowed, I guess, the legality question I have, why are they allowed to pick and choose and not be called on the carpet for the manner of how they act? Yeah, there's no accountability. And I think that's one of the big problems with the NCAA is that um, all of these schools are sort of bound to follow them for now, right? But like their legitimacy, I think, is on the line. And their legitimacy is the only thing that gives them power. And the more and more that that's undermined by people like Jim Harbaugh, by institutions, by Michigan that push back. I mean, Michigan's decision, by the way, to self-impose the suspension as a way to try to cut off the NCAA from imposing a four-game suspension after they revoked the negotiated agreement was an example of Michigan kind of like flexing a little bit and saying, we're going to do our own thing. We're not going to be beholden to you. And the more universities do that and challenge the NCAA, first of all, I think in the short term, they're going to be targeted by the NCAA. That's what we're seeing with Michigan, I think, is that they're a clear target. But it, to me, reflects the NCAA's own fragility. It reflects the fact that they are vulnerable, that the only way they continue to exist is because, frankly, we allow them to continue to exist. And I think, honestly, their days are numbered, especially as we approach two power conferences um which will have the ability i think especially with regard to football basketball may be a different story but with regard to football i would not be surprised to see schools just decide you know with nil developing more and more too and ncaa kind of becoming irrelevant there just saying we don't need you anymore we're fine you keep march madness we'll do our own thing um i would frankly be delighted to see it hey smith do you have you ever heard that before somebody said that it sounds kind of familiar. I feel like maybe back in uh, late May, early June, I might have heard uh, that before. Yeah, you, you and Michelle might. Y'all might be might. like great minds think alike. Y'all 